April 23rd, 2020. From El Cajon in San Diego, California, this is episode 207 of You Can Bet On That. Hi everybody, welcome to You Can Bet On That, a podcast for the recreational gambler. My name is Mark Duvall, and sitting in his house, comfortably I hope, is Dr. Mike. Hello. So how are you doing, how's Mike? How's it going, Mark? Yeah, how's it going? Good. Pretty good. Just hanging out at home. Yep, getting some stuff done? Getting a lot of housework done, yep, which is good, in a way. <laughs> yeah. Now, you're not going into work at all, really, these days, are you? Just a few emergencies here and there, very small stuff. Yeah. And mostly just to write prescriptions and talk to them. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. So I'm hoping that it opens up back soon for two reasons. Number one, my sanity. Mm-hmm. But number two, also, you know, we're not making any money. Yeah, that's rough. That is rough. Well, like I texted you the other day, as soon as the casinos open up, well, then you'll be back to making yeah. big bucks. Big bucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, I stop by my parents every day to uh, check on them and make sure they're okay. And today, my dad said that he cannot wait to get back to the <laughs> casino. It's the first thing he's going to do. Oh, man. His first trip out of the house will probably be to Barona. Well, now, didn't you tell me, though, that in his spare time, we've all got this spare time, he took it upon himself to figure out how much he had lost at casinos since yeah. the year 2000. <laughs> Yes. So in the last 20 years. All right. And we're not going to mention any numbers here, but you said that he wasn't able to sleep for a few nights. He was not. <laughs> he keeps an accurate track like you. Mm-hmm. And I guess he finally got around to like adding it all up. Uh-huh. And it was disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> Why would he torture himself like that? I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to tell the number, but in about 90% of America... It buys a house. Oh, yeah. I agree. <laughs> I'll give people an idea. Straight out. I think it buys a house straight out. <laughs> so he was not happy. No. Oh, that's funny. Well, we have been getting little bits and pieces of additional news from some of the casinos. Remember we had talked about how Caesar's Rewards had basically said that the people's reward credits would not run out while their properties were closed. And let me read a relatively new statement from them. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, reward credit expirations have been paused until at least September 1st, 2020. We are also making tier status easier to achieve, and we'll share details soon. So that's good. September 1st. So even if properties open before then, at least this whole expiration period is paused up until September 1st. Which is nice, uh, yeah. especially since when it does open, there will be a lot of people who will just say, well, I'll stay away for yes, a while longer. exactly. Just to be safe. Right? Yeah, so that is good on their part that they're doing that. And then with the last part, we're making tier status easier to achieve. Well, that makes sense too. You know, Maybe they'll just, again, take out how much time they were closed, you know, a percentage of the year, and reduce the number right. of tier credits that you have to accumulate during the year by that percentage. We'll see what they say. What I'm thinking they should do is just keep everyone's status the same for 2021. Yes. As the same as it was in 2019. Just pretend like we skipped 2020. Yes, and that is what MLife is doing. Let me read a statement from them. We are excited to announce that the MLife rewards tier status, whether noir, platinum, gold, or pearl, you earned in 2019 or in 2020, will be extended through January 31st, 2022. So they've already said, hey, uh, if you've gotten this tier status, you've got it through all of 2021. Right. That's the way it should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Hey, Mike. Uh, so you had some good luck here this last week. Tell everybody about it. Oh, yeah. I, I uh, won the um, poker tournament that Adam puts on kind of weekly. Yeah. He, uh, usually uh, he'll do like a Sunday tournament, Travel Fanboy Adam. Right. Sometimes he did. He did a Thursday once. A lot of times um, he'll do one midweek, and I think he took off for Easter. Right. But uh, this last Sunday, I actually won. Congratulations! So, you beat out twelve other yeah. people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I when I read that Melody put "Play Your Best Poker," Doctor Mike. Oh, uh-huh. that's what did it. That turned you around. <laughs> I said, "Okay, when you say it, I take it for granted. You know, <laughs> eh, it's Mark." But when, when Melanie says it, I my ears perked, and I, you had, I said, okay, I'm going to play my best poker. Yeah, you had quite a comeback, too, because you were on life support there for a while. 
Yeah, at one point, I think somebody went out fairly early, and there were 12 of us left, and I was in 12th spot out of 12. Yeah. And on life support. And so, um, yeah, it was a great comeback. Yeah, well, congratulations. (laughs) My daughter just wrote a piece of paper to me saying, you're talking very loud. (laughs) (laughs) He's on the show. Tell her you're on the show. I know. It's on purpose I'm talking loud. (laughs) Also, tell her that's your normal voice. (laughs) Right. (laughs) <laughs> I'll tell you what, getting back to the poker tournament, yeah. I am so glad Adam is doing these. I, oh, yeah. I am not kidding. There is so little gambling to look <laughs> forward to. So I'm finding myself on like Tuesday thinking, well, in just a few more days and it'll be Sunday. And <laughs> I'll, get, I'll play some poker. I know. Even though it only lasts a couple hours, it's entertaining for a couple hours. Yeah, right? it definitely is. Yeah, thanks very much, Adam. It has been nice. It is very nice. Yeah. Well, let me read an email that we got from listener Jim. I have a trip planned for Vegas and Zion National Park starting May 30th. While I'm hopeful that I can enjoy both, at least to some degree, I was hoping to get your thoughts on how these mega corporations plan to get restarted. Capacity restrictions, spacing between slots, required personal protective equipment from gamblers. How will handling chips work? My biggest heartache is that I will probably not be able to enjoy the magnificent Bacchanal Buffet at Caesars. A buffet opening in Vegas before the start of the Raiders season opener seems too hopeful. Thank you, Jim. And we got a call from listener Jason kind of along the same subject. So let's listen to that. Hey, gentlemen, it's Jason from Michigan again, uh, back-to-back weeks. Call in to see if you gentlemen would be able to get some information regarding what the future of gaming does look like in all casinos, but especially Las Vegas. I'm curious what we're going to do about touching chips, cards, and then mostly smoking. Obviously, in a casino, you can social distance yourself. You can sanitize a machine, but you can't prevent somebody from blowing smoke in your face that could contain the coronavirus. That is a big concern, I would think, for a lot of people. But I was hoping you guys might be able to interview somebody or make some calls to see if we're still going to be able to touch casino chips, touch our cards, or are we going to have to have all that stuff done by the dealer or virtually moving forward. So just be curious if you can dig up some information and give us your thoughts. Thanks. Take care and stay healthy. There are some casino executives that have already started to come up with tentative plans. And in fact, on the WIN website, they kind of have a list of procedures that they're planning on implementing. And it's kind of what you would expect. They're saying that employees would all be wearing masks and gloves at table games and slot machines. There would be a chair between each player. So every other slot machine might be turned off. Maybe at a blackjack table, only three players allowed. Gosh, at a craps table, maybe four on each side of the table. Yeah, it's definitely going to change a lot. My gut feeling is that nobody knows how this is going to come out. Nobody knows for sure, yeah. There's just too many variables. Take this scenario. I wear gloves every single day at work, Mm -hmm. all day long, hundreds of pairs of gloves, I'm used to doing anything with gloves on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could do anything. But somebody who's never worn gloves on a consistent basis, you expect them to be able to cut chips (laughs) or Or or, or deal cards or shuffle or deal cards. I get gloves that are so form-fitting to my hand that it's like skin. But a casino is going to have probably just small, medium, and larges. Yeah. <laughs> and shuffling cards with ill-fitting gloves would be pretty difficult, <laughs> yeah. to say the least. Well, and a lot of the things that they're talking about, too, are sanitizing all the time. So, you know, when s- somebody gets up from a slot machine, they're going to have attendants right. that come there and wipe it down. At table games, you know, they're talking about even w- wiping off the dice at the craps table every time there's a new shooter, things like that. But at the same time, it's like, okay, you know, if the dice go off the table, well, you know, you got to rub those down. It's just a lot of sanitizing and you're never going to get everything. And nobody really has a good idea on how chips are going to work because chips, you know, do you sanitize it every time you pay off a bet? Every time a player makes a bet and you pull it into your rack as a a dealer, do you sanitize it? So yeah, who knows? Right. 
Imagine checking out at the uh, cage with, <laughs> say, say $100 nickel chips, and then they have to wipe them all down before they count them. And then we, oh, yeah. I mean, it's Yeah, we will see, and we don't know for sure. I will say this. I think this is going to be the death of buffets at every casino. There may be some, like the Bach and all, that might survive only because it's a high-end buffet. But I think they're going to die because people won't go to them, certainly not initially. Right. People won't go. And the steps that the casino will have to take Mm -hmm. to ensure that everything's safe in a buffet (laughs) will probably make it cost prohibitive. Yeah. I mean, they're not going to have a cheap buffet anymore because they're going to spend a ton on trying to keep it clean. Yeah. And as far as smoking goes, I'm thinking initially they are going to require players to wear some kind of mask. So there probably won't be any smoking. I don't think that's going to ultimately eliminate smoking from casinos in the future. I think smoking will still be part of going to the casino. But at least initially, I don't think it's going to be a concern. Maybe what they're going to do is divide the casino up instead of smoking and non-smoking, you know, sterilize and mask portion and the wing it portion. Where you just, <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> yeah, because there are a lot of people that just want to do that. Or maybe even just a COVID-19 yeah. <laughs> section. You know, if you've got the disease, yeah, right. we have some dealers who also have the disease. Come on in. <laughs> right. Or if you don't care if you get it, then you can go. Yeah, to if you don't section, care. Sure. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out, like, all the real lower limits are in the safe section, and the high <laughs> limits are in the non safe. Well, I have heard a lot of different opinions about what the table limits are going to look like after this. There's one school of thought that, well, you're going to have fewer people at the table, so the minimums are going to have to be higher, you know, to make it cost effective. On the other hand, you know, I've heard people say, well, people are going to be real slow to come back to casinos. So the casinos are going to have to do things to get them in there, and that's going to be low minimums. So this kind of falls under the, we really won't know till it happens. Yeah, I, and I don't think the casinos know. They'll probably try one, and if that doesn't work, mm-hmm. they'll go to the other one, right? Yeah, yep. It, it's not just casinos either. Whenever there's an event in the world that kind of, you know, the whole world takes notice of, like, say, 9-11, it changed airplane flying forever. Mm-hmm. Not just here in the U.S., but in every country. And this is a worldwide event that is going to change how we interact as human beings forever. Sure. And so it's not just casinos. I mean, you know, is this the end of movie theaters forever? (laughs) Um, Yeah, I mean, it's a good point. Or they space the chairs differently? uh, Right. Is this the end of sporting events? I mean, going to a college basketball game in a building that seats 10,000 people, when it's packed... And the game's close. The excitement is unbelievable. Well, now if you're only going to put 2,000 people in there, is it going to be the same feeling? Would you even want to go to the game? Yeah. Recent- or could you get a ticket? Yeah. I mean, if you're going <laughs> to have only you know a fifth the amount of people, right? Well, just this last week, they finally canceled Comic-Con, which was no surprise. They were kind of waiting to see how things went. But if you've ever been to Comic-Con, you know that you're having a personal physical relationship with about 100,000 people. I mean, people are packed in right. there. <laughs> so I'm wondering how yeah, that's, that's going to be even next thing year. My girl said. That's the first thing my girl said. They said, oh, my God, in Comic-Con, you have to touch people. It's so crowded in <laughs> yeah. there. How's that going to go in the future? I'm like, yeah. I mean, what do you do with stuff like that? I was watching an episode of Star Trek Picard, and two of the characters were shaking hands. And I'm thinking, what are you doing? That might go away. <laughs> right? That yeah. might be something that right. you know the futurists right. didn't get right. Hey, we don't shake hands in the future. It's a big flaw in Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, the, the big flaw. The one big flaw <laughs> yeah. is... That's the time. biggest problem I have. <laughs> All the handshaking. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, too, I was telling my wife this the other night, I mean, how's this going to affect, like, let's say your niece gets married and you, you know, you want to give her a hug or something, (laughs) you know, on her wedding day. Do we just do away with stuff like that anymore? It, It makes for a pretty cold world. Yeah. Well, you know, once there's a vaccine, I, I'm not saying things are going to be back to the way they were, but once there's a vaccine and the infections have kind of died down, we might get back to where it's okay to hug your niece at her wedding. But things like handshaking, yeah. you know, things like that, those those might go away. Well, yeah, I'm okay with that. I think the fist pump is better anyway. Yeah, certainly better at the craps table. 
yeah, yeah. Or just a nod and a smile. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> just a nod. Just a nod. <laughs> we'll have to patent that, like, certain kinds of nods, ones that are, like, nice and ones that are not so nice and patent different it. kinds of nods. We'll get the patent on that. And then every time somebody nods, we get, like, a penny. That's right. They keep track. That'll fund That's our like... casino. Then, <laughs> then we can have a casino. <laughs> It's our dream. It's our dream. All right. Well, on the last episode, we were listing a bunch of good gambling movies for watching during this whole pandemic. And at the time, we said, you know, this is by no means a comprehensive list. And sure enough, there were plenty of suggestions that came in from listeners for additional movies. And let's mention some of those that came in first. And I feel bad about this because I completely forgot the movie Pool Hall Junkies. Listener Eric, a while back, actually sent us a DVD of this movie. And I failed to include it in the list last week. It's kind of hard to find. So that's why he sent us the DVD. It's, it, I don't think you can find it streaming anywhere. It's a movie about pool hustlers. It's written by, directed by, and starring Mars Callahan. And it's got a pretty good cast. Christopher Walken, Chaz Palminteri, Rick Schroeder, and Rod Steiger. I, it might have been one of Rod Steiger's last roles, if not his last role. Uh, so that's a really good movie, too. Yeah, did, say, did you eventually? I think I gave you the DVD. I don't know if you have watched it yet. You no, know, I have it right here in my list. I have a stack of about eight or nine DVDs I have to watch, and it's in there. I'm going to watch it. Okay, good. I want to see it. Yeah, it's just, you know, finding time, and I have to do it at a time when the girls aren't hogging the TV. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's probably not a good movie for the girls. Next, there's The Cincinnati Kid, starring Steve McQueen, poker movie. That's a really good one. Very good. Also, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, that's mixed reviews. You can either love it or hate it or maybe tolerate it or hate it, but that's not a movie for everyone. Also, there's Maverick, starring Mel Gibson and Jodie Foster, and James Garner, who was in the original TV show Maverick. And I think that's an excellent movie. It's fun. It's I can't, a fun movie. I, I've never seen it. Isn't it? That's hard to believe, isn't it? Somehow I missed it when it came into the oh, theaters. Oh, God. Really? Yeah. Oh, you got to watch that. Yeah. you got to watch that. There's a scene towards the end when um, James Garner and Mel Gibson are sitting in bathtubs next to each other. Uh-huh. And Jodie Foster walks in. That whole scene cracks me up. Okay. It's hilarious. I'm going to make a point to watch that. There's also Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. Didn't get very good reviews, but it's big on Vegas. He's working in Vegas at Wynn. Yeah. And finally, The Sting Academy Award winner for Best Picture with Paul Newman and Robert Redford. That's a great movie. And I'll tell you, it came out when I was in elementary school. And I didn't see it at the time. And I had a friend who spoiled the ending for me. It's like, uh, you know, I probably see this eventually. Yeah, you shouldn't have told me. Years later, maybe 10 years later, I watch the movie and I realize as it's ending that he had lied to me about the end of the movie. So I was completely surprised. Now, I'm not going to spoil what happens. I'm just going to tell you that he lied about the movie. And so I actually was in for a nice surprise. <laughs> maybe that's what I'll do from now on. If I've seen a movie that you haven't, I'll tell you the ending. You won't know if I'm lying or not. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes Mix it up. Be yeah. Be surprised. Sometimes you'll be bummed like, ah. Oh. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's good. That's a great story. That's good. Spock dies. Spock dies. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, he comes back to kind life of, yeah. the next one. Don't worry. I saw it. <laughs> Well, there are a bunch more movies, and so with the spare time that I had, I decided to actually put together a page of gambling-related movies, and you can go check it out now on our website, youcanbetonthat.com slash movies, and it is a much bigger list than even all the movies that we talked about this episode and the last episode. Over 200 movies, they're all alphabetized. They also, each one lists what year it came out, because some of these movies go all the way back to the 1930s, and maybe you're not interested in seeing really old movies, maybe you're only interested in contemporary movies, but all the dates are listed there. And there's also a rating of one to four stars. Now, ratings on movies, is it's always subjective, but this is kind of a general consensus, you know, critics and audiences, that kind of thing. But beware, because we've talked about it before. One of our favorite movies, Let It Ride. Well, it's one and a half stars on this list, and we love it. So you never know 
Yeah, it kind of depends with movies on what your bend is, what your interest is, mm-hmm. right? Yes. You can watch a one-star movie and love it because it might deal with an issue that you like, right? Yeah. And then, again, you can watch a movie that the critics give, you know, five stars to and you're like, well, I, you know. So you got to see them all. That's the <laughs> You got to see them all. I think Vegas Vacation is a good example because it got very bad reviews, and I can understand why. If I take a step back, I can say, okay, yeah, that's a pretty bad movie. But I enjoy watching it just because it's all Vegas and gambling and it's goofy. Right. It's goofy. That's why. That's what I liked about it. Yeah. So again, check that out. You can bet on that.com slash movies. Hey, thanks to everyone who's been clicking through our Amazon link. Remember, whenever you're going to buy something through Amazon, please go to our page first, youcanbetonthat.com, and click through our Amazon link towards the top of the page. All right, let's get to some voicemails. First up is Brendan. Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike. This is Brendan from Cleveland, Ohio. Dr. Mike, it's been a while since I've called back in with the Cleveland Browns update, but uh, we all know how that season went, so we're going to try to forget and move on. But, hey, we got your boy from Minnesota, Kevin Stefanski, so we're hoping he can whip Baker back up in shape and come back out and lead the Browns to the playoffs, hopefully, of course. But I just wanted to call in and and share something I was talking with my buddy about. My friend of mine is actually looking to have a bachelor party out in Vegas in June time, and we were talking about that recently with all this going on, and he was suggesting to buy our plane tickets, and I'm – talking to him, I said, I honestly have no idea if Vegas is going to be ready to go back in June, and, and he brought up a really good point. He said, well, just think about it this way. If we can get these flights for 50, 60 bucks round a trip, which they are right now from Cleveland to Vegas, one of two things is either going to happen. One, Vegas is going to be open, and we're going to save a ton of money on the flight, or it's going to get canceled, we have to push it back, and we at least get the credit back from the airline of course now you're stuck to one airline but hey whatever i'll roll the dice with 50 60 bucks and he also brought up another really good point which i didn't even think about to do but for all the listeners maybe take a look at your costs see what they have offer for future months because when we looked for june i mean we had free nights at the paris that normally otherwise we would never have had i mean we're talking free nights on friday and saturday so you know, hoping everyone stays safe. Obviously, this virus doesn't need to be rushed, and we all just need to get back healthy. But you never know. If this gets better sooner than later, you guys might be able to strike a pretty good deal on some flights and some rooms. Stay safe, guys. Go Browns. Yeah, great advice. Definitely take advantage of some of these offers right now. If you look, well, airlines is for sure. And like he said, the worst case is you'll just get a credit you'll have to use on the same airline. But if you look at some of the offers for hotels in Vegas right now for June, July, that kind of thing, you'll find some great deals. Yeah, it is amazing. Um, As a matter of fact, my wife and daughters were going to go to D.C. at the end of June, first week of July. And the reason they were going got canceled. So my wife canceled the airplane tickets and she said, you know, maybe we'll just go visit my mother in Minnesota. And I said, yeah, that's a good idea. So she got tickets for the same week from San Diego to Minnesota and back round trip tickets for 200 bucks. (laughs) Yeah. See, (laughs) and normally, honestly, we're paying like $700 and if it's a holiday weekend, like by the 4th of July, which is near when they're going, they're like $900. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you can get some really great deals now. And as far as the casinos reopening, you know, we'll see. I'm thinking initially, yeah, there'll be great bargains like this. I'm thinking that's going to continue, but we'll have to see. You know, if maybe the casinos open in a staggering fashion, like say the Caesars properties, they don't open all their properties on the strip, just a few here and there. So we'll see. Maybe there will be bargains, maybe not. But this is definitely the time to take advantage of them. Definitely. And as far as the Browns go, we'll see if football season it starts on time uh, too. Yep. That could be another crazy thing. I know. Um, and <laughs> here's a side story for you. So we, as I said on the last podcast, we were watching all the Monk episodes. Well, we got to the last season, and there's an episode that takes place during an NFL game, and it's this, you know, made-up team, yeah. the San Francisco Condors. And as soon as they got to the parking lot, my wife and I, our eyes lit up. It's Qualcomm Stadium here in San Diego. <laughs> really? 
oh yeah, it's Qualcomm. And we knew it when we saw the stadium, but when they did a big pan, you could see those big gasoline um, storage tanks. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, off to the side. Uh huh. And you know that that's the shoe in, right? I mean, it's Qualcomm, and all they did is probably when that was filmed. I don't even know if it was Qualcomm then. It might have been, you know, Jack Murphy or whatever. I think it was Qualcomm because that would have been early two thousands. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess it was Qualcomm. Anyway, they just covered it up with like condors. Mm-hmm. They put a sign over, you know, the Charger logos. Yeah. And I turned to my wife and I said, "Yeah, interestingly enough, that was filmed during an actual Charger game. There's just so few fans; it was easy <laughs> just to change the sign to condors." <laughs> Another true fact. <laughs> you can bet on that. <laughs> true fact. <laughs> and it was funny. It was it was Qualcomm. And she said, she said, yeah, think about it. It's it was filmed in LA and San Francisco for some of the street scenes. Mm-hmm. But when they needed a stadium, you know, where's the most empty one? Right? <laughs> yes. They're not gonna go to the Coliseum or Candlestick. <laughs> yeah. They just went to Qualcomm. <laughs> yeah, that's great. All right, next call. Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike. I was just thinking no one's at the casino right now, and I think everyone would like to hear maybe your favorite or funniest experience at a craft stand. For me, it was an older lady standing and just watching, and it was a pretty empty craft table. And me and my buddy were like, come on, you know, nice to come to you. Let, let's throw it. She's like, oh, no, I don't gamble. I was like, well, here, you can use my money. And I tossed her a chip, and she got the dice and threw them overhand. And one of the dice lands on our table. The other dice hits a dealer in the back of the head on the other table. It was the most insane thing I've ever seen. Still really just the funniest moment ever. So hope you're still playing. All right. Uh, What do you think, Mike? Funniest moment at the craps table? Well, funniest. Okay, favorite moment for me. It's easy to pick like one of the ones where we, you know, made a lot of money, like our well, sure. yeah, of course, winning yeah. uh, six on the fire. Yeah. But funniest experience, I'd have to harp back to the time that Paul split his pants when the dice went off the table. Yeah, that's, pro- uh, yeah, I agree. I still laugh about that. Yeah, because he wasn't even playing in the game. He was just watching, and the dice went off the table, so he went to grab them and bent over and split his pants. Right, and the look on his face was something like, Oh my God! What do I do? Yeah, because he didn't <laughs> and, give the dice back right away. Out. We're like, yeah, it's like Paul, give him the dice. What's right. wrong? What's wrong with you? Give them the dice. And he's just got this <laughs> expression. <laughs> yeah, that might be the funniest. Thing yeah, okay, ever. I'll go along with that. Can yeah, you think of a funnier. I can't think of it. <laughs> and that was at the old Landmark Hotel. Yeah, the wonderful Landmark. Oh man! You flush the toilet on the second floor and hear it on the eighth. Yep. <laughs> All right, next up is Mike. Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike. This is Mike from Charlotte, North Carolina. Hoping to get back at it as uh, soon as possible, same as you guys. But was in Vegas mid-February before all this COVID stuff happened. Good trip, three nights. I mean, my girlfriend only lost 120 bucks, so that was pretty good. And the fun thing that we started doing was timing our waitress on how long it took to get a drink. Because we stayed at Bally's, and the one time, it took 24 and a half minutes to get a beverage. Pretty crazy. Best drink service we had was Cosmo and the Cromwell. They were around seven minutes. So if you want a drink, don't go to Bally's. And uh, another good movie, Yonkers Joe. If you guys have not seen that, it definitely is craps heavy. I forget the name. Chaz, somebody's in it. The main guy, he's basically a scammer trying to uh, do some dice manipulation. So if you guys haven't seen that, check it out. It's uh, pretty good. All right, guys, keep the show coming, and uh, thanks a lot. Yeah, Chaz Palminteri starring in Yonkers Joe. We have not seen that, but it is on our new movies list, and we'll have to check it out. Yeah, I'd like to see that because it's heavy on crap. Yeah, definitely. Now, Mike, I know you and I have been at a table where we have not seen a cocktail server for hours. Oh, yeah, right here at Hera's Rincon, yep, right? Yep, definitely. And I think, let me see if you agree with me here. The best we ever had, as far as frequency, as far as how often she came around, was at TI. Yes, I remember her. You know, that, little, that, that. craps area she here. Came, she, it seemed like she came every four or five rolls. Yeah, I know, incredible. yeah. Yeah, that was great. All right, next up is Paul. Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike, this is Paul. 
I have a couple Las Vegas stories for you I thought you'd enjoy. Um, the first one is a possible cheating story actually taking place in the Mirage right when it first opened up. And I'll let you guys decide if this was actually cheating going on or what was going on. It was about December of 89, and I was there with my wife and mother-in-law and father-in-law. And my mother-in-law was a, a gambler. And her thing was, when she got into the casino, she would go over to the big six wheel and put down $20 on the joker spot, which pays about 40 to 1. She put her money down, and the, the dealer spun the wheel, and then he watched the wheel and his little review mirror they have sitting down on the table so they can keep an eye on the bets so there's no past posting going on. And uh, wouldn't you know, here come the 40 to 1. It barely made it past the peg prior to the 40 to 1 spot, and everyone was getting excited because you knew it was going to stop in the 40 to 1. It was just There was just nothing left in the spin. And we're watching it, and it looked like they put some grease or something on that spot because it just slipped right by. And I was like, oh, that was fun. That was exciting, you know. And then she went on to do her thing. And I looked over to my right, and my father-in-law waves me over. He goes, watch this dealer. So we're looking at him from the side, and the dealer would spin the wheel. And then he put his hands up on the table and, you know, get a good view of his little review mirror. And then he would take his left foot and set it up on the uh, console of the wheel behind him and kind of lock the heel of his shoe into that console and look very relaxed. And we would watch, and when that wheel would reach a 10 spot or a 20 spot and the wheel would slow down, he would apply a little pressure with his left foot, almost like he was stepping on a gas pedal. And that spot would slip right by and stop in the next position. And I thought, you know, why would the casino need to cheat? And then I realized, you know, the Mirage was just opening up. It basically was an experiment trying these new mega resort. And I'm sure they wanted to make sure their bottom line was looked healthy. So we never complained about it or pursued it because there was still a little bit of the old Vegas element hanging around. And we just didn't want to get mixed up in any of that. So we just let it go. So your thoughts on that. So the next story is a quick one. My wife and I were staying in the Bellagio. We had driven up from Southern California. And morning had come around, so I went down to get our car because we wanted to go uptown. So I had my valet ticket, and I walked over to the valet. And there was a guy in front of me in line. And he was having trouble finding his valet ticket in his backpack. And he unzipped it. He's kind of rifling through it. And he kind of turns it to the side, and I'm, you know, standing right behind him. And I look in there, and it is, it is full of stacks of $100 bills, brand new stacks. And he lost his valet ticket within those stacks of $100 bills. And he kind of mumbles to himself. He goes, 200000 in here, and I can't find my valet ticket. And then he kind of stopped and looked back at me and realized he said it out loud. And then he turned to the valet guy and goes, do you mind if I come inside the valet booth and dump this out? <laughs> he says, I'll feel a little more safe. They said, sure, come on in. So he went in there, and sure enough, he dumped out $200,000 on the counter looking for his valet ticket. So I thought that was kind of funny. Anyway, hope you enjoyed these stories. Love your podcast and all the different subjects you guys cover. Thank you. I would love to have that problem. Too much money and you can't find your... Yeah. So much money in my pockets, I can't find my valet ticket. <laughs> that would be a good problem. I'd love to have that problem. <laughs> Just don't go shouting at the valet stand, wow, did I win a lot of money this trip? It's all in this bag. I don't think, Mark, I should ever say what I'm thinking. First of all, <laughs> there would be a lot of swear words in there. Yeah, sure. And, and I don't know if it'd be that appropriate <laughs> for most situations. <laughs> Well, as far as this possible cheating at the big six wheel, I've got some questions. First of all, did he not apply pressure when it was just a small number about to hit? You know, he's, they said that anytime there was a big number about to hit, he would apply pressure. Well, was he doing it all the time or only when the big numbers were about to hit? Did he change the routine depending on what bets had been made? Right? Because if nobody had bet on the 10 or 20 or 40 to 1, then who cares if it falls on one of those? 
would him applying pressure even affect the wheel? It would seem like, okay, that's not how the wheel's built. You know, they don't build in a way to, <laughs> to cheat on the wheel. And maybe it was just subconscious. He's not even knowing he's doing it, or he's anticipating that the wheel's about to stop. You know, like he's pushing himself forward, like, okay, the wheel's about to stop. Now I've got to make my move, paying off bets or taking losers. I don't know. The thing is, if he was cheating, I doubt that it was because the Mirage told him to do that. I can't see them saying, you know where we can really pick up some big bucks is at the big six wheel. Let's cheat the customers at the big six yeah. wheel. Yeah, they don't have enough edge on that big six. <laughs> we need to cheat on that a little bit. You know what I think? It was just opening. He was probably an unexperienced dealer who was looking to like rest his feet. Yeah. Right. Because he, he wasn't used to standing for long periods of time. And, you know, the casino, I mean, they're so paranoid about somebody touching like a roulette wheel. They put glass around it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So nobody can push it or touch it. They don't want anyone touching the wheel. Yeah. It would be too inexact that way. Right. Yeah. And as far as talking about the big six wheel, dealers don't like dealing that game. <laughs> you know, it's kind of, it's dull or no. they're just standing around, you know, people don't play it that often. So yeah, I, you know, no way to prove it one way or the other, something that happened 30 years ago, but I'm guessing that uh, it probably wasn't cheating. No, I, I would be surprised if it was. And if I was a dealer, I wouldn't like dealing that game just for the fact that that game is the thing that attracts people who don't know how to gamble. Sure, yeah. They just come by for one so, spin, put $5 down. Right. And they might be confused about, you know, how much they win or when they win. I mean, it just <laughs> seems like it'd be more hassle yeah. than anything else. Yeah. All right. Last call from our good friend, Melanie. Hey, Marcy, Dr. Mike. This is Melanie from Colorado, and I'm just calling you from Las Vegas where I just landed for the NFL draft. All right. Not true. <laughs> it's where I was supposed to be in 80 degree Las Vegas under blue skies, not 40 degrees gray skies. But just want to call it and say I appreciate you guys keeping the show going during this time. I find myself looking forward to it even more than I did before, if that's even possible. Anyway, just wondering how you guys are coping if you're finding alternative outlets to crap playing. And I won't ask the question everyone wants to ask which is when will Vegas reopen or when will your uh, local casino uh, reopen so you can go out there, play some crafts, and get some more stories. But I am curious, do you think free play will accumulate? Probably not, right? Anyway, just wanted to tell you guys I love the show, and I'm just thinking about how much I had been looking forward to this draft. In fact, I had two nights in a row where I was hanging out with Patrick Mahomes. Sorry, Dr. Mike, I know you don't like the Chiefs. <laughs> I'm glad we won the Super Bowl while there was one to win. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing great. I've just been uh, reliving some of my favorite craft moments when I've been out running. And one of those is at the hard rock. It was early one morning, probably about eight. This guy had been up all night. His thing was is he would pick up the dice and he would start angry whispering at him. And then a friend of mine walked through and says, hey, Melanie. And I turned around and say, hey. He goes, run now, run now, don't disturb anything. He did it in a really funny way. I know this sounds like he's annoying, but I was so highly entertained. So... Anyway, um, thanks for all you do, guys. I understand where this guy is coming from. Years ago, probably when we were back in college, we were on a trip. I don't know if you were on this trip, Mike, but we were playing at Las Vegas Club. And our friend Gary, remember our friend Gary? Yes. Yeah, he was there. I was playing at a craps table, and it was a real hot roll. And Gary started walking towards the table from across the casino, and I'm thinking, oh, no, oh, no, he's going to ruin it. So I'd like shoot him away, like, go on, get out of here. Don't come up here. And so he turned around and went the other way. <laughs> That's just smart gambling. <laughs> yes, it is, Mark. It's like when, when we're at a table and it's not very crowded and somebody walks up and you just get the feeling that they're not as experienced or something. And one of us will turn to the other one and say, come on, keep on walking. Keep, walking, <laughs> keep <laughs> <Yeah>. going. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like under our breath, shooing them away. Yep, smart gambling. <laughs> you know, Melanie was talking about the weather in uh, Vegas. So I'm going to give you a quick update, Melanie. I'm looking at my phone right now. And this Saturday, it's going to be 93 for the high. Sunday's 96. Monday's 96. Tuesday's 98. Wednesday, 98. 
Yeah, great. So it is warming up the, in April. I feel like one of your daughters is like, "Okay, Mike, the weather, we got it." Yeah, I've got the San Diego weather, I've got Minnesota weather, <laughs> I've got El Cajon weather, and I've got Vegas weather on my phone. Nice. So I don't have to look them up. I just hit a button and there they are. <laughs> Yeah, Melanie, I, we don't think we're going to get any of our free play that we're missing out on during this thing. Maybe they'll have one bonus day where you know they give us something. Because it's not just free play. They have gifts that they give away, right? Little kitchen items and things like that. And I'm sure they're just sitting in a warehouse somewhere. So they're going to want to you know, give those away. Yeah, those are probably ordered like months and months in advance, right? Yeah, right. As far as have we found an alternative to playing craps, not really. Certainly I haven't. That We were talking earlier. It's nice that Adam has been putting on these tournaments. But no, I, I haven't been doing anything to really scratch that itch. What about you, Mike? No, not at all. I mean, we've been playing some board games with my wife and daughters and things like that. It's not really gambling, but, you know, it's it's a game. And so that kind of makes it a little fun. But nothing really substantial. I was hoping that you and I could just go up to the Total Rewards booth at Harris Rincon and say, look, I was here every day for my <laughs> yes. free play and the doors were locked. <laughs> I was thinking I that up. too. <laughs> Where were you? <laughs> See if they'll give us a few of them. Yeah, really. <laughs> Let me ask you this, Mike. Once it does eventually reopen, are we going like that first day or the first day that we can? Well, I'll tell you what, Mark, if it somehow reopens before they let me go back to work, then yeah, I'm probably going to the casino. Okay. If it's after I'm back at work or coincides when I start back to work, I may be pretty busy. I mean, we may just go on the weekend like usual. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I'll go with you then. I'm going to all wrap up. I'm going to wear a big mask because, not because I've got the disease, but certainly it'll, it'll help prevent me from touching my face. And you know how big touching my face is in my life. It's like one of my biggest things. Yes. It's your thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll bundle up. But yeah. Um, okay. Well, we'll see when that happens. My wife has already started making me a full body suit oh that will cover everything but my eyes. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I'll just have some breathing equipment inside the suit uh -huh. <laughs> so I can breathe my own air over and over and over. All right. Will we be able to hear you or will you have to use sign language for the bets? <laughs> Well, I think the dealers know my bets, Mark. No, that's true. You don't have to say a thing. I just, I don't have to say a thing. I'll just put my money down. That's the advantage of going here. <laughs> I've got it. You throw down some crazy amount, $267. It's a bet, Dr. Mike. They spread it out. <laughs> yeah, they, they spread it out just like normal. <laughs> On a more serious note, I'm hoping that when we go back, the same crews are there. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. You know, maybe some people needed money and moved or got other jobs yeah. or, you know, how much will that change? And, you know, we're used to the same people that we like and love to see. Yeah. It will depend on how well the casino is taking care of these employees while they're closed. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on to a gambling scene. This scene is from the movie, The House, where Will Ferrell and Amy Poehler play a married couple, Scott and Kate who are trying to figure out how to pay for their daughter Alex's college tuition. And ultimately, they end up opening an illegal casino out of their house to raise the money. But this scene is from early in the movie, before they've opened the casino, where they're on a trip to Vegas with their friend Frank, played by Jason Manzoukas. And Frank gets on a heater at the craps table at the Wynn. What are you waiting for? Get in on this. I'm hitting every single number over and over again. Let's do this. Dice are out. You guys need money? I am literally making every single person at this table money. I don't know. We said we weren't going to gamble. Come on. What's the worst that could happen? Maybe we put a few dollars on four. Hot suitor. I mean, yeah, the fourth is Alex's birthday. Right? We'll just do one bet. I kind of can't lose at this point, so let's do this. 
Welcome to the win, sir. Uh, not number four, please. No, no, not all 500. Oh. Oh. So Scott didn't want all of the 500 that he bought in for to go on the four, but it was too late. And a four was rolled. I should tell you the probability of hitting four again, very unlikely. But if we do, you guys are going to double that, and it's going to pay out big. And plus, it's for baby Alex. Alex, 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 Alex. That's a four. So the roll continues, and it's just four after four after four. So eventually Scott has a huge bet on the four, and if you actually look at the chips when you're watching the movie, it's $81,000. Now, of course, whether the win would actually allow a bet like that or not, who knows, but $81,000 is on the four. Okay, guys, if I roll another four, that's Alex going to college, all right? I feel very lucky right now. We believe in you, Frank. All right. Whatever you do, don't roll a seven! And at this point, everything goes in slow-mo. Why would you say that? I didn't know! And it's great. They must have used some CGI or something because the dice roll down and it looks like it's going to land on four. One, three. And then the last second, that three spins into a six. Seven out. There was no four. Hey, that money's my daughter's college tuition. Yeah? Well, she just got accepted to the School of Hard Knocks. And Scott jumps on the table, you know, to kind of attack the dealer that said that and try to get his money back. So, you know, this is a great example of really a terrific scene in a movie that got terrible reviews. (laughs) (laughs) But I remember seeing it in the theater. I actually went and see to see the theater with Sherry. And as soon as that scene was over, it's like, okay, I got my money's worth just on that. Did he buy the four? That's what I want. He bought the four, absolutely. And you even see the little buy lammer on top of it. So yeah, they, oh, nice. they made it as Good. realistic as possible. Although, again, would they take a bet that size? And when the seven out comes, the dealer says there was no four. Four wasn't the point. But you could argue that the dealer's right. just kind of being a jerk, you know, <laughs> with the whole school of hard knocks thing anyway. <laughs> And uh, they yeah. even use a part of that clip in the opening of the Seven Out podcast. That you know, whatever you do, don't roll a seven. Why would you say that? So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still have not seen that movie. And you know, when it was in the theater, my wife and I kept, oh, we got to go see that. We got to see that, just knowing that it would be bad, but knowing that it would be something that would entertain us. Yeah, and we never did. So. Maybe I'll look for that, see if I can find it on uh, one of the pay channels. Yeah, you'll you'll definitely enjoy it. I know you will. All right, well, that's going to do it for this episode. We want to thank some people for some recurring PayPal donations. From Justin, from Robin at Anytime Gambling, from Nathan, from Brian Dancer, from Brian and Sarah, and from Josh. Thanks very much for those recurring donations. And we also got a PayPal donation from Coach Matt. He says, this is long overdue, a little token of my appreciation for the outstanding work you both do on a consistent basis. Thank you and keep up the great work. Thanks, Coach Matt. We need to meet up with you somewhere and roll some dice with you. Thanks. In one of these off-seasons, I hope he gets a hold of us and we plan a trip to um, Vegas or or maybe even here to Harris Ring Con. Yeah. I'd love to show you San Diego. Yeah, that would be great. Hey, be sure to check out our TV listing showing all the gambling related shows coming up within the next two weeks at youcanbetonthat.com slash TV dash listings and our list of gambling related movies at youcanbetonthat.com slash movies. And let us know, too, if you've got a movie that is not on that list that you think should be. We'd love to hear from you. Call our voicemail hotline at 951-292-4377. That's 951-2-WAGERS. 951-2-WAGERS. Or you can email us at youcanbetonthat at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at youcanbetonthat and on Facebook at facebook.com slash youcanbetonthat. Finally, please go to your favorite podcast app and write a review on us. We love getting your feedback. What do you have to say, Dr. Mike? Well, you know, a couple things. Number one, I don't know about you, Mark, but I've been having a few uh, gambling dreams in the last few weeks. Okay. 
kind of my probably my subconscious, you know, wanting to go play some crap. Yes. And nothing I can remember. I just remember waking up thinking about things. And I was getting up in the middle of the night, which is another thing, you know, you get restless sleep when you're out of your normal routine. And I just had a gambling dream. And I was thinking to myself, I hope that we don't go back and find out, you know, somebody we knew had COVID-19 or, you know, in worst case scenario, passed away or something. Because we we do know a lot of older gamblers. Definitely. um, Some friends and some people we just see all the time at the casino. So I hope that everyone makes it through this, at least everyone that we know makes it through this safe. I know not everyone will make it, but... Hopefully, um, people we know and we care about and we'd like to see at the tables will all be safe and sound and healthy and come we, back at full strength. Yep. And we wish that for everybody listening as well. Yes, exactly. So, yeah, I'm anxious to get back and, and see everybody. It's funny. I think about people. You know who I was thinking about, Mark, the other day? Who? Andrew, our friend Andrew, who moved to Arizona. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, we haven't heard from him in a while. We haven't seen him. Now, they, he used to live here in San Diego, and they left and moved to Arizona. So I hope they're okay. And if you're listening, Andrew, give us a call. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. All right, anything else? Oh, I will say this. I am so pleased with how the Padre season is going. <laughs> yeah, me too. Tied for first place at the end of April? You said that. He, in a previous episode, you said April 30th, they'd still be in first place. And you were right, my friend. <laughs> and here they are, yep. still in first place. Yep. I, I hope we don't lose all of baseball I season. I know, but it might happen. Too. Gosh, yeah. For me, that's a huge bummer. Yeah. I mean, I really you know, enjoy the baseball season. Yeah. You know? yeah. All right, everybody. We'll stay safe, and thanks for listening. Good night. Dr. Mike.